everybody, Aaron Blaze here. It is Friday, August 6th, and we are back <laughs> on another Friday. We got Dustin here in the house. Nick, Nick Birch is still on vacation, having a, an amazing time in upstate New York. Man, you should see the photos. Oh, my God, I'm so, I'm so envious of him right now. Beauty. He's, up in, uh, he's up in the North Gentry, and he's having a great time swimming in the rivers and frolicking with the animals and all that kind of stuff. But today I thought, you know what, why don't we just sit at the drawing board. I'm going to pull out my big, my giant newsprint, and I'm just going to draw animals today. I just feel like drawing animals. Pull out my charcoal pencil, my cheap little charcoal pencil, and we'll do some drawing. I got my cheat sheets. I like to make these little cheat sheets. These are, um, go to the down shooter, Dustin. Uh -huh. These are my, uh, I, I like to, I pull together some of the photos that I've taken over the years. And I'll just put together a little montage, montages, collages, uh, cheat sheets uh, that I can use when I want to draw certain animals. And uh, I've got all kinds of them. And they're fun to use. And so uh, there you be, there you be. What's this one? Oh, there's Here Vedanta. So I've got lots of them. Bears, elephants, lions. Lions, tigers, and bears. Coyotes, cheetahs, Tires. and wolves, and, and even more than that. But anyway, I got those on standby. We're gonna use those and uh, but before I start drawing, I want to get into uh, some of the housekeeping stuff. I want to remind you, uh, next weekend, Saturday, we are doing a live stream, a live event, uh, all day long. It's going to be from about 11 a.m. Uh, this is on the 14th. 11 a.m. to uh, about 6 or 6.30. It's going to be myself and Chuck Williams, my directing slash producing partner of the last 25 years. We've known each other for... Uh, over 30 years, uh, we worked together for Disney. Chuck produced Brother Bear. I directed, um, uh, co-directed, and then along with you know Chuck is also he just produced uh, uh, Sonic the Hedgehog. Um, he's done a lot of stuff in his past. We have a certain way that we have developed in getting ideas developed off the ground and into production. And so we want to take you through that process. And hopefully, uh, if you're a young filmmaker wanting to make it. Um, you can glean some of these ideas and make them part of your own, some of this process. It's, it's all the way from how we come up with our ideas to developing the ideas, finding the character, finding the world, uh, finding the theme of the story that you want to tell, getting it all to coalesce. How do we pitch it? Um, how do we market it? How do we pull a crew on? Uh, all that kind of stuff. We want to talk about all that with you guys. It's a six-hour class. So it's a lot of stuff. So we're really just scraping the surface, but we're hoping it's gonna be enough that it, it'll, it'll, for those of you that are interested in that sort of thing, it's gonna be enough to get you rolling and, uh, and explore more opportunity down the road. So that's gonna be next weekend, August, uh, next Saturday, August 14th, from 11 a.m. Eastern time to, I believe, six o'clock, I think, at six o'clock uh, Eastern time. And uh, go to creatureartteacher.com slash live, and you can get all the information there. All right? So, and the seats are limited, by the way. So I want to let you know that. We've only got a, uh, a few seats left. It's actually been selling pretty well, but we do have some seats left. We're limiting it to 300, and uh, we're well on our way towards 300. So um, just keep that in mind if you want to do it. Um, also, the books. Uh, matter of fact, I just got a phone call from Nick saying that the proof for my new Art Of book, the big coffee table book, is it's almost at his house. I didn't quite have time. Obviously, we started late today. Sorry about that. Um, but I didn't have time to go to Nick's house and go get the book. So next weekend, we're going to have a little surprise for you, and we're going to have the book, and we'll show it to you. Actually, I do have the 100 uh, drawings book. Dustin, can you hand that to me? Yes, one second. Actually, Dustin's here. Say hi, Dustin. Hi. I mentioned that earlier. All right. There he is. Here. Here. So are you in the down shooter? Uh, yes. I don't know how small this is in the down shooter. Is it pretty small? It's a little small. Can we zoom in? Can you come over here and zoom in real quick? I know. Sorry. I'm keeping you on, oh, keeping you on your toes. <clears throat> keeping you on your toes. Zoom in a bit and then go back and see if it's... Don't go too far. 
I don't know if that's going to be too far. Yeah, just, a little high, just a little higher up. Higher up, right there. So this is my, um, my book on 100 drawings. And it's just that. It's 100 of my drawings out of sketchbooks and, and whatnot. This is, um, this is the smaller of the two books. This one is still available for pre-order as well. And this is the proof. I'm very happy with it. Um, uh, and it's just a lot of my goofy drawings that I like to do. Uh, all on gray paper. So it's got the white pen work and the dark pen work. Um, and it's just, you know, it's all my, it's, it's me. It's basically me. It's just a collection of a whole bunch of my drawings. This is available still. This is the proof. Like I said, uh, we'll be getting all the books in, in the next few weeks. And, uh, if you go to creatureartteacher.com, uh, you can find the order forms there. So this is still available for pre-order. And also I want to mention for the, for the coffee table book, for my big one, the art of, we had said in the beginning that the first 100 uh, people to order uh, will get a signed copy. Well, because it's taken uh, longer than expected, um, we want to give you guys a little bonus. So anybody that orders, pre-orders a copy is going to get a signed copy. I'm just going to sit for like a week in my studio and sign books uh, because you guys have been so supportive. Uh, I want to make sure that you guys get signed copies. It's going to be a very fun week. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Dustin's going to hate it. But uh, this is my 100 drawings book. And uh, I'm, like I said, I'm very happy with it. It's got, you know, fantasy stuff. It's got my from life observation, real wildlife stuff. Uh, goofy. There's a goofy drawing caricature of my dad. It's got, I mean, it's just, it's kind of a stream of consciousness. And all my little made up little cartoons. Um, it's a little further, a little more to the right. To the right like that uh, yeah how's that and even observations these are drawings that I did while I was in China you know at the Great Wall and, and in Beijing so it's really a variety of stuff um, just going through sketchbooks and going hey this hey there's Manny's hawk that's Dakota Manny Carrasco if you guys know Manny Carrasco this is his red-tailed hawk Dakota she has since uh, gone back to the wild and she's living life uh, but this is a drawing that I did of uh, Manny Carrasco's hawk. Uh, but here we are. I mean, it's, it's, I mean, I'm not going to go through the whole book, but there's a lot in here. So this is uh, 100 drawings. This is the proof. I'm, and, it's, and it came out great. I'm really happy with it. And so if you're interested in that, go on over to creatureartteacher.com. You can order this one. And the next, way, next week, we're going to also show you the big book, the big coffee table book. We'll share that with you. You can put that over there. And then you're gonna, and we're going to open this back up. If uh, I could squeeze in there for a quick second. Sure. I want to be able to actually see how close I'm to. Uh, <clears throat> right here. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's why you have an assistant working with you. Put your hand uh, right towards the center. Is that center? Yeah. Just want to double check on the focus. Focus. Focus, focus, focus. All right. I'm going to turn this on me. A fan. It gets so hot in here because of my computer. So hot. So hot. Hot, hot, hot. So let's draw. Like I said, I got Dustin here. He's going to be answering questions. He's going to be pulling double duty. Hi. So he, so be patient with Dustin because... Um, yeah, he, you too, Dad. <laughs> I know. I'm the worst one to say. <laughs> be patient because he's going to be trying to jump around from uh, platform to platform and, uh, and ask questions. I don't have any questions around me at all. I'm sitting at my drawing table. And I depend on Dustin to, to shout out the questions. So if you don't get your question answered right away... Um, it's all Dustin's fault. <laughs> so I'm gonna, if I don't, or if I don't hear what you're saying, saying dad, it's, it's yeah, definitely right. not my fault because I'm trying to read all these questions. <laughs> but one thing I like to do, I love drawing big. I love getting in here and just drawing, uh, animals, right? And, and here... And I love, one of the things, one of the reasons I love getting in here 
uh, on this size is I, I can't stand doing little noodly little drawings. And so coming in here and being able to draw like this, it, there's something about it that's just really freeing, you know? Excuse me. Oh, bless you. Uh, one of the first questions uh, from Facebook, uh, what do the traditional 2D animators do that still work for Disney since their movies are now CGI? Um, most of them are gone. There's only about three 2D animators that are left now. Eric Goldberg and uh, Mark Henn, Alex Cooper Schmidt, uh, 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 Randy Haycock, but everyone else is gone. Um, that was one of the sad things about the whole thing. What do the guys that are still, still there do? They, they're still little 2D things. Uh, they do drawovers for, for some of the CG guys. They're still um, 2D thing. Like in Moana, you remember when... Uh, 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 what's it, what's uh, The Rock's character's name in Moana? Uh, Maui. Maui. You know, his tattoo, his tattoos animated. Remember that? Yeah. That's all 2D. That wasn't CG. Eric Goldberg animated that. Very nice. Yeah. Bet you didn't know that, did you? I think I, I think you did mention about it in the past. I just forgotten about it. And uh, how's your back? <laughs> My back is much better. It's still um, in pain, um, but I'm able to um, put my clothes on without dying. Much better. I've, I purposely took. Uh, some time off. Didn't go into the gym at all. I haven't been in the gym in eight days, which is feels weird. But um, how, how can you see all this? By the way, Dustin. Uh, yes. I think the left side does a little bright. Hold on. Let me. Um, should I pull it over a little bit? Oh, maybe turn it. that light off. So I love just coming in and just doing these gesture drawings and then letting them develop, see what, ha what comes out of them. I'm thinking about, you know, remember I always talk about my, the six sections of the, of the, um, of the image, of the, of the animal that I'm drawing. There's six sections. There's a head, there's a neck, there's a shoulders and front legs, like so. There's the trunk of the body right here. And then there's the hips and back legs. And then there's the tail. I can't put both books into, into my cart. What am I doing wrong? I don't know. I'm not there. Uh, um, uh, I don't know. I'm sorry. I don't know what to tell you. Um, that's, not my, that's not my expertise either. Yeah. I'll try to relay it to... Uh, Nick in a little bit. Uh, what colleges have you visited so far? Colleges? Oh, I've, I've visited... All of them. All of them. <laughs> <laughs> Tons of colleges. Um, and all over the world. So uh, I, I couldn't tell you off the top of my head. But I'm a graduate of Ringling College of Art and Design. From 1989. If you can believe that. So here, once again, now I'm using my little prompts here. What I what I like to do after I get these roughed in like this is just kind of come in and then Maybe even rub them down a little bit. You get a little smudgy. A little smudgy smudge. A little smudgy, but it creates kind of this interesting little effect. And then I can go in with details. 
Is that a peel and sketch charcoal pencil? Yes. And how many wolves have you drawn? All of them. All of them. Every <laughs> last one. I have no idea how many wolves I've drawn. Hello, love your work. Uh, Hellos. You, hello. Uh, do you always <laughs> have a picture for uh, for reference? And how do you check proportions? Uh, how do you check if their proportions are right? Uh, I don't always have a picture for reference. And uh, my system, because I'm around animals a lot, and I've drawn a lot of them, I don't really measure or anything like that. It's not something I do. It's It really is. It, it's sounds corny but I mean it's I, if it looks right it is right that's what that's what I do I can tell if it's out of, if it if it looks weird have you ever drawn fish 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 yeah I've drawn a few fish fish uh, how often do you sharpen your pencils not very matter of fact I like them dull so in this case I don't sharpen it at all And I'll just keep using edges and whatnot. Any type of wolf you're drawing in particular today, or yeah, it's a gray. Wolf? This is a gray wolf. Gray timber wolf. Yep. So what I like when I, you know, when I get in here and, and draw like this and you're drawing with charcoal like this, it's so much fun because you can get these nice soft little schmears. But I can go in and accentuate areas with hard line. And so you can play these. These areas against each other. A little soft. Oh, is the dog at the door? No. Any tips on how to draw uh, mustelids? Like ferrets, otters, etc.? You know, it, it's all observation. One of the things I hope you're going to see today, because I'm going to hit several animals, is Did that... Did you pronounce that right, by the way? I don't know. All, all the animals, because I, I don't know their scientific family or, or, or group name, but they... Um, they all have the same parts. We all have the same parts, by and large, if you're, especially if we're talking about mammals, four-legged animals, two-legged, whatever. We all have the same parts. We're just proportioned in different ways. And so I'm, that's why you know, I always talk about thinking about the head, you know, the, the neck, the shoulders and front arms. And that's with any, any animal that I'm drawing because we all have them. We're just proportioned to different ways, and I'll, you'll see as I go through this, as we go through this, we're going we're gonna to look at them in different ways, and that's what you have to memorize for each animal, is like, how are they different? You know, with a wolf like this, I'm thinking about that diamond shape, yeah, that square on its corner shape for the head. Look how much fun you can have with these. Charcoal pencils. So I love you're gonna get you're gonna get nice and dirty. Look at that. See, you're just gonna get dirty and just have have fun with it. So we got two more. Uh, uh, we got two book questions. Uh, yes. One of them we've already answered, but it was like the very beginning. But this is for like comers. Uh, I pre-ordered the Airblaze. Uh, or no, that's the second question. Uh, I pre-ordered the Art of Aaron Blaze yesterday. Will it still get signed, or have I missed the opportunity? No, like I said, if you if you still get in there with a pre-order, and this is considered a pre-order because they haven't been delivered yet, you will get a signed copy. So you have gotten in just under the radar. <laughs> another yes. Person, another person says, uh, I pre-ordered uh, the Art of Aaron Blaze in December, 
And I've just ordered the 100 drawings book. Uh, will the two books be sent in one package? That I'm not sure yet because I, we're going to send them as soon as we get them. So if we get them together, then yes. But I don't think they will be sent in one package because I don't think we'll be receiving them at the same time. Uh, are there still scholarships available? Yes. Yes, there are. Do you know how to draw a cuttlefish? <laughs> you know what? That's a good challenge. I um, I kind of know what a cuttlefish looks like. <laughs> also, could you draw a fat cat? <laughs> Let me see. Hold on. Let me see if I can draw a cuttlefish. I'm going to come back to that wolf. I'm going to do this really fast. Yeah, cuttlefish are the ones with like the really large... No, that's anglerfish. Let me come back this way. What is a cuttlefish? Go on a piece of paper I've already drawn on. What's this one? Oh, this is my cat from my cat video I did. Can I draw right here, Dustin? Can you see it? Uh, yes. Okay, so let's see. I'm just guessing. Oh, so that's a cuttlefish. So it's like a... Hold on, let me, let me see how close I get. Cuttlefish, I know they have the weird pupil. And they're like a squid. Yeah. Just short. Yeah, they they look they look uh, they're really they cute. They look like a dwarf squid. They've got kind of a forehead, I think. Man, I'm doing this right off the top of my head here. So let's see how accurate I can be. You tell me how accurate I am, Dustin. Pretty close so far. Do you like to draw fan art? Like 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 pictures of fans? <laughs> yes, exactly. Just like <laughs> just like that. No, I don't like to do fan art. No, I like to do my own original art. Uh, have you seen Space Jam Two already? If so, what did you think of the two D anime? animated clips. I wasn't crazy about it to be honest with you. And I don't usually like to badmouth other animated projects and um but I just I, I think it was a little over the top in how it could it could have pulled back a little bit on how broad it was. Yeah when it came to two D I like the the first Space Jam more because they because it really felt like they they amped up on the uh, on the quality of the animation as far as like lighting and everything goes, but Space Jam Two, it felt flat. Like it felt like they just pulled it straight out of uh, out of the TV TV shows, like not movie quality. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So how's that cuttlefish look? That's yeah, pretty close here. I'll show you. Let me get the wing out here a little better. Oh, it's not too bad. Yeah, I guess I did. I gave him too much of a forehead. Yeah, and I should have made his body a little bigger. And the fins come in more down here. Yeah, man, that was close though. And also, I think the tentacles are a little. little they they should be thicker. Thick, a little thicker, yeah, and also closer together. But see, I, I knew I got his eyes. See the eyes? Yeah. <laughs> got the eye right, <laughs> at least. Yeah, I've I've seen them in the wild swimming, diving before. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I need to get myself a uh, an underwater sleeve for my camera. See here, I'm just doing kind of the imagining him some shadows. Coming in like so. Uh, have you watched Luca yet? <clears throat> yes, I loved it. I still need to watch it. Yeah, I think you'll like it, Dustin.
When did you learn to draw the moment you were born? <laughs> I started drawing at about nine months. My mother, um, my mother, we didn't have art supplies. And back in the day, there was no such thing as plastic garbage bags. and I mean, plastic uh, um, grocery bags. Everything was in paper grocery bags. And uh, we didn't have paper lying around the house except for the grocery bags. And so my mother would take those grocery bags and cut them up into flat sheets of brown paper. And, um, and she would uh, set me up in my high chair and, um, and then set me loose drawing. Uh, how was Green Knight? It was, um, I'm trying to say, once again, I don't like to badmouth other people's movies. I'm, okay, I, I know there's a fan base for this. If you like Terrence Malick, I'm not a huge fan of Terrence Malick's movies, although I could appreciate the visuals, and uh, and I think they're really interesting in that way. Um, but their narratives are always very hard to follow, and I'm all about a good, clear narrative so I can get into it and just let my emotions kind of follow in that way. And The Green Knight was very much a Terrence Malick movie. It's almost like if Terrence Malick tried to do Game of Thrones. It's a lot of really cool imagery um, that for me was, you know, you have to kind of put it together on your own and see, see what conclusion you come up with. And some people love that. I want a director that's giving me a clear vision that I can follow and I can, you know, follow the emotion and everything, you know, that, that goes with that. That's my personal uh, choice there. So I wasn't crazy about it. I was really disappointed because I really wanted to like it more than I did. Can you draw insects? Uh, yeah, I usually I can draw them if I have them in front of me. Uh, do all wolves have the same muzzle shape or are they different? Well, it's, I mean, to a degree, in the same way that all people have the same muzzle shape. You know, so we all have noses. We all have general, the general same shape nose. But within that, there's quite a bit of leeway. And so wolves are kind of the same way. What would be the best starting point to learn to draw? Putting a pencil on paper. <laughs> right? Yeah, basically. <laughs> I can't figure you're going to say something like that. Yeah. <laughs> Just put the pencil on paper and go. But, um, let's see here. This is an interesting angle that I, I saw, and I wanted to see if I can get it. After finishing Snow Bear, what is the next great project? I don't know. There's, you know, since I've moved into this area, um, into this, uh, um, refuge area that I live in now I've seen so much really cool nature that is just inspiring a lot of different uh, little little bits of animation that I'd like to do I love this angle I love trying to get in and doing difficult angles like this. Uh, have you ever watched a movie solely because the animation was so good? Yeah. Oh, yeah. What was that? Lots of them. Um, the... the uh, Probably the primary one was The Thief and the Cobbler. Mm. So the key is to get this little S shape. You want to make sure you get that, that shape in there.
Would you say that anyone can draw with enough interest and work? Yep. I'm a big proponent of that. I firmly believe that. It's learning how to see. Drawing is learning how to see and translate what you see through your arm and out of your hand. It really is. It's nothing more than that. And drawing what you, and over time, drawing what you see can translate into, you know, drawing out of your head and creating better drawings. But so many people that don't, that claim they don't know how to draw or can't draw are just, they never really sat down and observed and they, and they, they draw symbols that, you know, that are in their head for certain things. But beyond that, they don't really, here, I'm just sketching this in just because uh, I just want to see. I like to challenge myself to do these little weird angles. Do you believe in magic? And what Do you is... believe in magic? And what is your favorite medium to use? Uh, I love watercolor. I love charcoal. Like we're no, I don't believe in magic. I think no, I believe in illusion. Um, and uh, my favorite medium is watercolor. I love watercolor, but I also love charcoal, like I'm using now. It's just so much fun to get in and get dirty and. There it is. Uh, will you ever look at people's art and critique? Yes. We will do that at some point. Right now, it, it's hard to do just because of the sheer volume. How's that looking, Dustin? Is it, am I drawing, am I staying on the... Yep. It's ever so slightly off to the left, but that's about it. Pull it this way? Yeah. That's good. <clears throat> Do you believe in magic? I don't know this song. Uh, what art advice would you give your younger self and why? Um, I would just say just stick to it. I mean, I, I always did. I never, I don't know that I, I was always really patient with my art. I knew, I, I, I think I had, one of the biggest, one of the, and this is something I kind of pride myself with, one of the things about being a good artist is being able to tell when your drawing is wrong. And so as I was younger, I was able to tell, I would struggle a lot with my drawing and I could tell it was wrong and I could never figure out, a lot of times it was a struggle to figure out what was wrong with it. And so I was able to look at artists that were much more developed than myself and see what they were doing. And so I could see how they were handling certain situations and then I could mimic that. And I learned along the way. And I think that's, that's one thing. And so in order, so basically keep your mind open. You know, look at your drawings when you're done and say, okay, how is this, not just how is it right, but how is it wrong? What's, uh, what would I do differently? Challenge yourself. Be your own worst critic. Don't, don't, don't compare yourself to other people. I'm not saying that. But I think you can look at yourself and say, okay, how can I make this better now? Uh, have you ever had success in drawing something with the opposite hand? No. I'm left-handed. I draw with my left hand. That's how I keep it. A lot of people say, you ever try drawing with your other hand? And no, I don't. I'm, uh, 
<laughs> I'm not a Peter Hahn. If you guys know Peter Hahn, that bastard, he, he, keeps, he keeps two sketchbooks. He has one sketchbook where he draws with his left hand and another sketchbook where he draws with his right hand. <laughs> like, damn it, Peter. I don't know how he does it. The guy's so talented. I think you should make that as a YouTube challenge. Yeah. Try and draw with your, with your opposite hand. I love that guy. He's so good. And he's so humble. And he's so nice. Really looking forward to our time. And we're going to Africa together. Cannot wait. Yeah, we're going to Africa in September. And Peter's going to be on that trip. So we're going to have a good time. Along with Manny, Carrasco, Nick, and Dustin. Dustin's first trip to Africa. So excited. I bet you are. Man, so when I was, when I was your age, I, all I ever did was dream of going to Africa. I mean, ever since I was a kid, and um, and I think I was your age the first time I went. I was thirty-one. Actually, is I'm going to be hitting thirty-one on September sixteenth, which is the first day. Oh, actually, the first day of our safari of our yeah. safari is your birthday. Yeah, that's yeah, right. Exactly. Yeah, so yeah, that's for the first day or two. I worked that one the, enough. The first day or two before that, uh, we're going to be fly, flying our way there, and uh, but yeah, the the first day of our safari is going to be landing right on my birthday. Yeah, and I'll be tur and like I said, I'll be turning thirty one. Uh, what materials are you using? Charcoal, pencil, and newsprint. Okay, so I'm going to I'm going to do a completely different animal now, but we're going to talk about the same uh, the same parts, remember? Uh, but this time uh, we're just going to proportion them differently. So I've got a head. Oh, that's crazy. No, you're crazy. Uh, uh, someone on YouTube named uh, uh, Gwen wants to doodle says that. Uh, uh, says my sister's B day is September sixteenth. No, it's not too crazy. You know what the most common birthday is in the world? What? September sixteenth. What? Yeah. <laughs> You're kidding. No, because you where that come, you know where where does the conception for that come in? Do you know where that comes in? Christmas. I think it's the 16th. It might be. It might be the 15th or. Okay, so here, look. So here, I've got same animal, or it's not same animal, but same parts. So we're going to talk about parts. You've got a head. It's a much smaller head, slight head. Okay. And then we've got the neck, which is a little bit longer and slender, much more pronounced shoulder blades, much longer uh, body, but it still has the same rhythm as the wolf. It has that S shape. It's just a little bit more uh, uh, exaggerated. You're going to have the hip right here, pelvis. Same general shape to the, to the uh, front legs. Uh, what are your favorite books on drawing animals or just drawing in general? Um, I don't really have favorite books on that. I, I, um, I just like to do it. I mean, there's a lot of great books on, on drawing animals and drawing in general. But uh, for me, it's, it's getting out there and just doing it. Just do it. Just do it. Do it. So notice the length on the on the on these body parts now, and the slenderness. Here's a rib cage coming up like this. Uh, 
Wolfie Girl from Twitch says, Hey, Aaron. Hey, how's it going? How's it going, E? Uh, I'm a huge fan of your work, and you've been such a great inspiration to me. I've learned so much about animal anatomy and character design because of you. Uh, this weekend, I'm bringing my sketchbook to my local zoo. Uh, Good. Any, any tips for drawing animals that are moving around? Yes. Understand their anatomy. Take a, take a little, uh, do a little bit of research before you go and find out what animals you're going to be drawing. And uh, brush up on your anatomy ahead of time because, as you can see, like what I'm doing now, um, you know, a lot of these animals I can draw like this out of my head. I'll have little cheat sheets here and there, but I, have, I draw them out of my head because I've studied them. And a lot of times it's just gestures like this. I'm not getting in. I'll, I'll use my cheat sheets for details. But I can, you know, it, it's finding these muscle groups. Like, the, you know, here's our shoulder blade. And, you know, understanding this, the anatomy coming in to a situation like this. Actually, I'm going to pull that tail down here. There we go. And so if you understand... The anatomy first, faced, faced, faced. If you understand that anatomy faced, then enough for something completely different. <laughs> when you go in to draw, um, when they're moving around, you can just throw. You can see, um, look real quick. This is one of the techniques I do. Is I'll watch the animal, and I'll look away, and it leaves a, an, an imprint on my brain, and I can do a quick gesture. You know, like, uh, you know, like a, here's a cat walking. And I can just do, you know, this quick gesture of this cat, you know, walking along. That, that might take me 30 seconds, 40 seconds. And then, and then, then you can stop. And that the knowledge that you have in your head can then take over. And you're jumping between what, drawing what you see and what you know. And you back up drawing what you know by drawing what you see, okay? Because a lot of times we'll make mistakes when, we're, when we think we're drawing what we think we know. And so I'll put it down the way I think it should go down, and then I'll look at the, the model and go, oh, okay, I'm, I'm messing up a little bit right here, and I can make adjustments. Uh, what is that sketchbook you're drawing right now? This is a giant newsprint uh, pad, a uh, newsprint pad. And would you like to draw a graphic novel? You know, um, I've never done it. I think it would be kind of cool. Uh, I I would ma much rather do animation. To me, that's the same kind of thing. It's just um, uh, I want to see my pictures move. It looks so so cool, you guys. <laughs> so once again here's different proportions but it's all the same parts so we got our neck here which is a little longer a little more slender and we get this nice fluid movement through the body right shoulder blades with muscle on top and uh if we if we could see through, you'd have these the, verte, the vertebrae have these parts that come up, and that's where muscle attaches to. So you have a lot of muscle up on top here. Trapezius muscle coming off the back of the neck, connecting to the to the shoulder blade, coming down into here. Deltoid muscle, tricep muscles in here, coming in, and all those muscles that I'm pointing out right now exist on. A cheetah like this they also exist on a wolf like I just drew but the fur and the fat and everything else on a on a wolf is going to be different than what you see on a cheetah so it affects the surface more and it and also obviously you got two completely different species and that's going to affect shape and proportion but the parts are still there that's the point that I want to make and so it's remembering that, okay, this is, here are the parts, and this is how they're shaped differently on a cat, and more specifically, on a cheetah. Here are the parts, 
And here's how they're, they're shaped differently on a dog, or more specifically, on a wolf. Here are the parts, and here's how they're shaped differently on a bear. You know, and this, can you continue through that. Uh, have you done any illustrations for National Geographic? It's always been my dream. That's always been my dream, is to do an illustration for National Geographic. And no, I, I haven't really pursued it. Since, you know, that was my original goal as a kid, was to, was to work for National Geographic. And I also love how dark Actually, I'm going to turn this around. I'm going to turn his ear completely around. You can, you can erase pretty good on the... Uh... With these pencils on this paper. Uh, do you ever sculpt bottles or clay? I don't. I love sculpting, and I did a fair amount of it when I was in college. I just never followed up with it. Uh, what do you do for a living? I'm doing it right now. You're watching me. I teach you guys how to draw. <laughs> I make stuff. I'm, I've gone from making films, making a living that way for, for big companies like Disney and Digital Domain. I went from that to teaching. And so you guys purchasing my lessons on my website, that's how I, I buy my groceries and pay my mortgage and all that kind of thing. That's what I do for a living. So, and then obviously you get into the markings and the markings are, are gonna be definitive of whatever animal you're trying to draw. In this case, our cheetah. But it's remembering those different proportions from animal to animal, that's where, even if it's an elephant, you know, that's where the, uh, the differences come in. And you just do a lot of it, and you start to, that stuff starts to bury itself into your memory, into your, and you can start, it's muscle memory, you can start to recall it, you know? It's like anything else. If you play a lot of baseball, everything becomes, if you you know, it becomes muscle memory on how to swing a bat and knock a ball out into the, you know, hit a double or whatever. And it's the same thing with with art. You know, you do enough of it, a lot, it all becomes second nature, and you don't think about a lot of the different things. And in this case, with animal anatomy, it starts. You do enough of it, it, it buries itself into your brain. You know, so many people go, how, do you, how is it that you know this or that? Well, I just do it a lot. How is it that you know, a gold medal soccer player gets a gold medal? Well, they do it a lot. I'm not saying I'm a gold medal artist. I'm just saying I do what I do. I can do what I do because I do it a lot. I just got a ding. Let's see if that's from Nick. Hey, Dustin. Yeah. Can you give this to Vedanta? It's a, uh, it's a question. Just let her know it's from the inspector. It needs to be answered. 
So I'm selling my house, my old house. I'm in a new house now. And, um, and uh, so someone's buying it. So that's good. So we're getting it inspected today. And I guess the inspector had a question. And I am with you guys. I am not talking to the inspector. Look at that. Oh, I love getting all dirty like this. So, yeah, getting these these uh, these big uh, newsprint pads and get lots of these charcoal pencils, everything. Uh, this is all really cheap. And just sit there and draw. I love drawing big like this. And you can just get in there and have some fun. Did you find her? Yep. Uh, is illustration a good degree for 2D animation? Is illustration? Yeah. A, is illustration a good degree? Illustration's a great degree. It, 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 it's not animation. You know, I do, I have an illustration degree, but I learned animation outside of college. I actually learned my animation at Disney. Random question. Can you come up with a good artist name for me? <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> Art boy. Uh, draw, <laughs> draw, drawer, the drawer. The drawer. I am the drawer. There, so there's, there's the start of a cheetah, which you might see in a cheetah. I like this drawing random. It's random. It's on random. So then when you get in there, in your head, to start coming up with action poses and things like that and um, you can push them really far hard in your head So yeah, I like to come in and, like I said, challenge myself to come in and Is it just me or is it just heating up so quick? It is hot in here, man. Yeah, because the sun's out. Uh, can you share some tips on drawing backgrounds or environments? Uh, I always struggle with them a lot. <clears throat> well, the biggest, I think the biggest thing that people do wrong with environments and backgrounds is they, they don't think of it as part of the composition. It's an afterthought a lot of times. And so you got to really make sure that you're, you're considering the entire composition. In this case, I'm not really thinking about a background. But what I am doing is I wanted to show you how loose we can get. How loosey goosey. Loosey goosey, baby. Loosey goosey. I got way too long. <laughs> what? 
I got so into like, oh, I'm going to push this perspective. I got way too long. And up there is a cheater, right? Yes, sir. come in anyway how would you create motion blur actually i'm going to pull it pull it up huh? oh, i'm just talking to myself well okay <laughs> uh, how would you create motion blur using pencils without making it look cartoony <clears throat> well, it all depends on the amount right it's the amount that you do and uh but you'd be surprised at how much you can get away with and still not be in the cartoony realm. You know, you've, you've seen slow motion of people getting hit in the face and how much the face distorts and stretches. And... And so, you know, you can, you can push it quite a bit before it starts going too much. Here, I want to do this. There we go. Maybe I'll do that. I heard that cheetah babies look kind of... Like look, honey badgers. Yeah, they look like honey badgers, and that's yeah. their natural defense system. Uh, have you heard about that? And yes. And is it true? Um, it's true they look like honey badgers. Whether or not that's a coincidence or nature intended that, I, I couldn't tell you. But they do look like honey badgers, that's for sure. So you can see, you know, what I'm doing here is I'm thinking about the head. Here's the head. I'm pushing the, the design a bit. Ears. Coming back. Oh, Caroline has a question. Uh, she's saying, I'm really uh, struggling for reference. Are, there, uh, are they similar to other big cats for running? Uh, cheetahs? Yeah, I think cheetahs. Yeah. No, they're very, they're very, very distinctive. I mean, they're, yeah. There's really no other big cat like them. But they're, I mean, all the big cats are really, are really distinctive. You know, a leopard to me looks like a leopard. It doesn't look like anything else. A lion looks like a lion. A, you know, and a cheetah looks like a cheetah. So now there's similarities, and you know, you can look at the 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 you know mascara around the eyes all the big cats have that they've got the big teardrops on their on their brows you know they've got all these different similar markings um, and also their running cycle is like very unique too yeah and that's the and that's what the base of the question is is uh, similar to big cats for running. Oh, well, they, there's, they're running, their run is, is, the pattern is basically the same. It's just, uh, it's more exaggerated. A lot of times I'll just scribble in. There's the other leg there. This one's bugging me. I can't find I can't find a satisfactory. I want to have it reaching out to get that. Uh, do you have any tips on creating uh, fictional uh, animal beasts? Uh, 
anatomy correctly? Is it more of just mashing some bits together? It's not match, mashing bits together. It's understanding the physiology of how animals are put together. And you can make up your own, but it's a lot of you know, understanding the, what, is the, what are the mechanics? What's the, how is this muscle, what's going on as far as the, 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 the physics of what this animal has to do? You know, like a Pegasus, it's not just a pair of wings attached to the side of the body. You know, there, you have to really adjust the the way that animal's put together in order to accommodate the musculature that it's going to take to flap those wings, right? On a, on a winged horse to carry that to carry that body. And so it's things like that. Thinking about those types of things that that I think um, Tara Whitlatch is so good at. Tara Whitlatch is someone I really recommend you look at. Uh, she's a wonderful character, character and creature designer. She comes at it from a, a very strict biological and physiological um, discipline. So everything she creates could live. It could, it could, you know, it could survive out there. She's created a lot of the Star Wars creatures that you've seen. And she comes at it from a point of logic and, and understanding the environments and, you know, where these, like I said, where these creatures come from. And uh, from earlier, uh, for the people that were asking about why they uh, can't order both books in the same cart, um, I just got a reply from Nick uh, saying that uh, it's because they ship separately. Oh, that's why. Okay, so the they two, ship... The two books ship separately, and that's why you can't order both books at the same time. And so that answers the question earlier from the person asking if they get shipped together. No, they do not get shipped together. They're going to be based on uh, Hawaiian time. They'll they get, get there when they get there. Definitely sooner than, sooner than way later. So anyway, I, I'm drawing this just to show you. You can get in once you understand some of that anatomy and how it works. You can get in there and push it and, and end up, you know, you can draw some fun kind of caricatured, exaggerated uh, drawings as well. Like what I'm drawing here. And how do you spell uh, Tara Whitlatch's name? T E R R Y L. W H I T L A T C H. So, do you know how to put a link in the comments? If you can find a link to her book, you can put that in there. Oh, some, somebody already, somebody already uh, helped out. Thank you. Okay, good. Thank you, RG villain. Yeah, check out Terrell's stuff. Never thought I'd say thank you to a villain. Terrell's one of my favorite people in the world. Would be great to have Terrell, uh, uh on one of your live streams or if she could do a course for you. Actually, it would be interesting. It would. Have you thought of that idea? Yeah. We've already approached her. Oh, you have? Yep. Is she thinking about it? Or? Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Huh? Just shut up. Oh. Stop talking about it. I'll shut my mouth. Gosh darn. Donnie, you won't stop talking about it. Shut up, Donnie. Go over the line. Uh, what is the highest amount of frame sequence uh, you have animated for one scene or a shot? Um, I'm trying to think. I mean, the only two that I can think of that were 
pretty pretty long that I know that he did were um, from Trial Mix Up the uh, the swing. Yeah, and but that I mean that clash. was a that was a long shot, but it wasn't the longest. I'm trying. It was to... also the clash between Beast and Bell. That was yeah, that was a long shot. Huh? That was a long shot. Yeah, but did you do one that was longer than that? Well, technically, but it's not, it wasn't very hard animation. Mm. But technically, the very very last shot in the Rescuers Down Under. It's actually during the credits. Very and is it Wilbur or Orville in that one? The gull. Oh. Oh, you drew uh, Wilbur? Yeah, do you remember at the very end, he's actually sitting on the eagle's nest? Oh, yeah. And he's going, hello! Hello! <laughs> yeah. Help me! Yeah. And, all the and it's a long pull out, then we start the credits. Yeah. I animated that. It was really? tiny, tiny, tiny animation. I mean tiny. Because it's this long pull out. How tedious was it to animate that small? It wasn't that bad actually because I didn't really have to do any features. Hey Aaron. Uh, hey how's it going eh? It's funny you say that, eh? Because uh, Archie says, uh, Hey, Aaron, I'm from Canada. <laughs> How's it going, eh? How's it going, eh? Uh, and I was thinking of making a fun stereotype illustration about Canadians, LOL. Uh, but I've never made a book before. Uh, do you have any tips? Um, no. I mean, I've never really made a book other than my art of book, but that's different than what you're trying to do. Um, just do it. Go for it. Find as much, uh, um, information as you can out there and, and, you know, then just go for it. Don't be so awkward there, bud. <laughs> uh, did he draw a cartoon bear? Uh, yes, you are drawing a bear. Yes. Yeah, so this is, this is my, my polar bear from snow bear. Once again, I wanted to illustrate the uh, the idea of having all these same parts again. Once again, we, here's our head sitting on a, a fairly long neck. Polar bears have long necks. Uh, is it and better? Oh, once again, real quick. Once again, the shoulder blade sits under the skin in here, connects to the shoulder, which comes down to the elbow, which comes down our wrist and comes into the uh, paws. Same thing on every other four-legged animal that we've looked at. Uh, is it better to be an in-between animator? No, that's well. That's a different. That's a different department. So if you're an in-betweener, you're literally doing the drawings that go in between uh, the key drawings in order to smooth out the action. You're not actually animating the shot. You're just helping to smooth out the shot. Is it better to be in there than the animator? No, because the animator is the one that actually creates the shot. But, I mean, there's a lot of people that made their careers off doing in-betweens, which is fine. One thing about bears, they are called plantigrade. What does plantigrade mean? Well, it means they walk with their heel on the ground, just like us, instead of digigrade, which are what dogs and cats do. They walk on their toes, on their digits. And what is... What is it with hoofed animals? I can't remember what that's called. Digigrade, plantigrade. I can't remember. 
can't remember that one. The hoofed animals are one or another version. There, there's our polar bear. Glenn, I call him Glenn. Glenn? Yeah, Glenn oh, the polar wow. bear. He's fun to draw. I love, first of all, I, I love polar bears and I love coming up with this design. I, um, one of the things I love about a, a, just a natural polar bear's design is the shallow that they have barely any forehead. How's this? Is it? Can you see what I'm drawing? Yes. So I got the snout that comes out. You can just see maybe the other part of the brow over there. Do you still talk to your old Disney buddies? Oh yeah, all the time. Oh yeah, sure. I'm keeping that nice and simple. Letting this come right into the jaw. Right here, the eye is relatively small. Compared to the rest of the head. way down here cheekbone comes down and that comes out I imagine a, the cheekbone coming back around there so I indicate it with a little bit of a line and that's where the muscle for the jaw comes out it looks like, like so. we got a, a brand new viewer <laughs> who is the person reading chat and saying what's in the in the chat to Aaron <laughs> that's my son Dustin hi so then here, what I love about that, actually it comes up, there's a little bit of a break right there for the, for the nasal cavity. Oops. Hey, Merritt Andrews says, hello from one of your old Disney buddies. Hey, Merritt. Merritt. And so one of the things I love is Merritt listening. Merritt. <laughs> And he, say, and he also says, loving this lesson. With all caps in loving. Who's that? Merritt. Oh. He says, loving this lesson. No, she. Oh, my mistake. That's okay. It's now. been a while. <laughs> uh, what do you think is the future of classic animation in the industry? I think it's going to be on uh, streaming platforms. That is the future. I think we're going to have just as much of it as we did in the 90s. I think we're going to get there. So one of the things I love about that, that shallow forehead is that it really fits nicely right into the flow of the neck and the body. And the here, you know, on the neck, I can keep the top really smooth. Now, it connects to the back of the skull, so there's a little bit of a, a dent right there. But then on the bottom... You, know, you got all this fur that comes off the the bottom, uh, the bottom of the bear. Did you draw Dustin? Um, I used to uh, back in high school, and sometime a little bit of time after that, but not really any anymore. I haven't drawn in like. 
five, six years. But nowadays I uh, do uh, primarily photography. Yep. Hey, which, speaking of, I actually think I'll do um, a live stream on my Twitch tomorrow of... Oh, yeah, talk night. about that. Yeah, so tomorrow we're planning on uh, going out to Wildlife Drive in uh, down here in Apalka. And I thought it would be a fun idea to try... Uh, try something unique out because uh, get to the point man get to the point basically I'm going to be live streaming uh, my photography out in the field tomorrow yeah actually you you got the camera hooked up to your camera lens so the viewers are going to be able to see what you're looking at through your camera yeah as I was about to explain before you cut me off my uh, the phone that I have is the Sony Xperia Pro which has a a micro HDMI uh, in embedded into it so you can hook up a camera into the phone and you can turn your phone into an external monitor but not only that you could also use it as a streaming antenna for your camera and so that so that's what i'm going to be experimenting with tomorrow and i figured my twitch uh, channel would fit perfectly for that and you can find it under d blaze uh on my twitch d blaze d blaze and uh, probably be heading out there. Probably about eight, seven thirty, eight in the yeah, morning. Yeah, seven thirty, eight o'clock uh, Eastern Standard Time. So hope to see you guys uh, on there tomorrow. Fluidity. This is what I like about polar bears: is that you see <laughs> that fluidity through the body. I'd love to animate this big. Wouldn't that be cool? Yeah. It'd be hard to flip the paper. I don't know if I could flip, flip. I don't know if I could flip the paper. But that's it. I think we're going to call it a quit. I'm so hot. It's freaking hot in here. (laughs) It's about 90 degrees in this little studio of ours. And, uh... But I want to remind you guys that next Saturday we're doing our live event with Chuck Williams uh, where we talk about story and getting film projects off the ground and the processes that we've developed uh, over time uh, to do that. And so we want to share that with you. So go to creatureartteacher.com slash live and you can get more information on that course that we're going to be doing a live event next Saturday, August 14th from 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time to 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Also, remember, uh, where'd the book go? I'm going to show the book again. Uh, one second. Uh, 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 my books. Uh, if you are interested in getting my Art of book, which is my uh, a collection of all of my paintings, not all my paintings, but a collection of my paintings over the last 20 years. Uh, it's a full coffee table book. We're actually already... We're already talking about volume two because we were, we just scratched the surface with the amount that we put in on the first volume. Um, you can go to creatureartteacher.com and you can get, uh, you can still pre-order that and you'll get a signed copy. Um, here's my book on 100 drawings. Uh, here's the proof. And it is just that. It is 100 drawings um, of mine from various sketchbooks. How's that look? For various sketchbooks. And um, uh, I'm really happy with this. And so this one's available as well. It's a much lower price point. If you don't want to spend as much money, uh, this one's available. And it's just, it's just a smattering of my drawings from my sketchbooks. Uh, I've got piles of them. I've got hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of these. And so we just picked a hundred of them and threw them in. We're probably, we're talking about doing another volume of this as well and we're doing we're talking about doing a volume of just my sketchbooks called sketchbooks and it's going to be more about my observational uh, from life drawings and so that's another book that we have in the works uh, planning coming up so keep an eye out for that Uh, so anyway uh, I really had a good time with you guys today remember when you want to sit and draw animals I like to put together little cheat sheets like this boom like that um, and uh, I use them in case I need them. Uh, show, show that one more time. Okay. Oh, yeah, because the camera. 
Boom, like that. There you go. Is that better? And um, uh, the, uh, they really help if you get kind of stuck on what's going on with the anatomy and, and that sort of thing. But get in there and, and just practice. Um, this thing's getting all crinkled up. I'll just go through what we did today. And remember, all these animals, all these different animals that I'm drawing, we all have the same parts. They're just proportioned differently. And so it's really pushing yourself to understand those different proportions. Is that better? Yes. It's shifted ever so slightly to the right. To the right. Right there. So we got polar bears. We've got cheetahs. Um, we've got more cheetahs. That's why you should never play poker out in the African savanna because of, because of all the cheetahs. There's one there. But remember, they've all got the same proportions. Or not proportions, but the same parts. Different proportions, but same parts. Okay? This guy was fun. Uh, uh, raise the uh, book just a tad. Raise it? Yeah. Uh, if possible. Okay. Like that? Yep. Like that? Like that. Then our other wolf, our wolfie. But once again, same parts, different proportions. And so, and that's, and that's a great way of cre uh, creating creatures too. Once you understand the relationship to these different parts, the head, the neck, shoulders and legs, tr trunk of the body, hips and legs and the tail, you can play with those proportions. You can change them around and create your own cr uh, creatures. And, uh, and that's fun to do. So anyway, go out and, and try that. Uh, thanks a lot for joining us today. Uh, remember, next weekend, or next week on Friday, we're going to have the brand new coffee table book. We'll be able to show that to you, and I'm excited about that. So I hope you guys have a wonderful weekend. Uh, go on out there and make someone else's life better. Create some art. Bring some beauty into someone else's life. Put your shopping cart away. Do that. Open the door for somebody. But above all, go out and do some art. And uh, um, you'll... Never regret it. I always love sitting down and drawing. I'm like a little kid that way. I still <laughs> still love to sit down and, and pull out my crayons and draw. So I hope you learned something today. Uh, get out there. Put some beauty back into the world. And I will talk to you next week, Friday. Take it easy. Bye. Hey, guys. Thank you guys so much for watching. Glad you guys enjoyed this stream. And for any newcomers, if you're interested in any uh, wildlife photography, and you have an Instagram, uh, be sure to go over to the Instagram and check out my channel, which is Dustin underscore Blaze. And I occasionally uh, post new photos on there. And uh, also don't forget to uh, take a peek at my Twitch tomorrow when I, uh, when da Dad and I go out in the field tomorrow for some wildlife photography. And also on Creature Art Teacher, you can find uh, my current photo reference packs of Florida wildlife, from gators to otters and wide assortment of uh, birds you can find here in the swamps of Florida. So I hope you guys have a great weekend. See you guys next week. And as always, Cowboy Bebop. <laughs>